All right, so now we're going to factor the sum and difference of two cubes. All right, so here's the first one, the sum of two cubes. All right, so back uh, previously, uh, somewhere you learned how to multiply a binomial times a trinomial. Well, if you take this binomial x plus y and this trinomial x squared minus xy plus y squared, and you multiply these things out, you know, it took me a long, long process here, multiply those out, it would simplify down to x cubed plus y cubed. So factoring is just going in reverse, going backwards. If we have uh, an expression that's written as something cubed plus something else cubed, then we automatically know that it has to factor into um, a binomial, x plus y, times this trinomial of x squared minus xy plus y squared. Now x, x and y are just variables here. They really could be anything. Um, but we'll see an example of that here in just a little bit. All right, and so then the other one is the difference of two cubes, where you have something cubed minus something else cubed, then it factors into x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. These are very similar formulas, um, and so I don't think you need to think of it as two separate formulas to remember, to memorize. I don't think that's the case. What we need to understand is the pattern that's going on here. Whether you have x cubed plus y cubed or x cubed minus y cubed, you still have a binomial times a trinomial in both situations. Now, if you have the sum of two cubes, then the binomial is going to have a plus in between the two something. So x plus y, where this is something cubed plus something else cubed, then you have something, the first something, plus the second something. And if you have the difference of two cubes, x cubed or something cubed minus something else cubed, then you have the x minus y, something minus something else. Now, once you have those binomials, you can get the binomial. You can always get the trinomial part. Now, to get the trinomial part, the first part of the trinomial is take the first part of that binomial and square it. Know that it's the same in both cases. Take the first part of the binomial and square it, and that's what you get for the first part of the trinomial. Then the um, sign of this middle term, notice this one up here is a minus, and this one down here is a plus. The sign of this middle term in both the formulas is always opposite the sign that's inside the binomials. Everybody see that? And these signs in the binomials come straight from whatever it is you're playing with over here. This is sum, and this is a difference. To, get the, to actually get the middle term now, you just take the two somethings and multiply them together. So you'd have minus xy, and down here you'd have plus xy. Then the sign of these last term is these last terms is always going to be a plus, and this last term here in both uh, situations is take the second part of the binomial and square it. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, x cubed plus eight. All right, the question you want to ask yourself is um, how do how do we factor this completely? Well, go through the entire steps. Uh, you look for the greatest common factor first. Is there, some, is there something common to all, or to both of these terms, to all your terms there? No, there is not. But if there was, we would factor it out first. The next question you should ask yourself is, all right, how many terms do I have? Well, I have two. If you have two terms, then you have um, three options for it to be able to factor. The difference of two squares, which we learned about before, and now these two new ones, the sum of two cubes or the difference of two cubes. Well, clearly the difference, is, the difference of two cubes is not an option. So the question is, is this the sum of two cubes? Well, we notice that we've got something cubed plus 8. Well, can we think of 8 as something cubed? Yeah, 2 cubed. So this is really x cubed plus 2 cubed. So we've got the two somethings, the x and the 2. And so we say, all right. The binomial part will be the first something. Since this is a sum of two cubes, we have a plus. The second something, which is 2. And once we have that, we can get the trinomial part. Take the first something here, x, and square it. Then the sign of the middle term is always the sign opposite what's inside the binomial. So this is a minus. Then take the two somethings, x and 2, and multiply them together. And the sign of the last term is always a plus. And the last term is take the last part of the binomial and square it. So x cubed plus 8 factors into x plus 2 times
times x squared minus 2x plus 4. Now this x squared minus 2x plus 4, even though it may look like it's going to factor, it will not factor any farther. This is just as far as it goes. That's provided uh, you took out the greatest common factor to begin with. All right. So uh, let's look at uh, let's look at another one. All right. What about 2a cubed minus 54b cubed? All right. What's the first thing you look for? Well, the first thing you look for is the greatest common factor, which in this case would be a 2. So pull out a 2, and that would leave behind a cubed minus 27 b cubed. Everybody see that? Let's give a little more room here. All right, now we say, what about a cubed minus 27 b cubed? Well, that's, that's a binomial. There's two terms there. So if it's going to factor, uh, it's going to factor either into the difference of two squares, the sum of two cubes, or the difference of two cubes. So is it could it be a difference? Could it be the difference of two squares? Well, you have a cubed, and you got 27, so it's not looking very good for uh, the difference of two squares. So what about the difference of two cubes? Well, we have a cubed minus 27b cubed. So we like the a cubed and the b cubed thing. So the question is, what about 27? Can we think of 27 as something cubed? Yeah, we can think of 27 as 3 to the third, 3 cubed. So really what we have here is uh, our two somethings. So, so this 2 is going to go along for the ride. So the first something here is going to be a. And then what do we have to cube to get 27b cubed? Well, 3b. Does everybody see that? If you take 3b and cube it, you get 27b to the third. And then it's a minus sign here because, well, it's a minus sign uh, in our binomial there. So this is how you get the, the binomial. And once you have that, you automatically can get the trinomial by saying, all right, take the first term of the binomial and square it. The sign of the middle term is opposite the sign of the binomial. And then multiply the two somethings together, the a and the 3b, and you get 3ab. The sign of the last term is always positive. And to get the last term, you take the second something, in this case it's 3b, and square it, and you get 9b squared. And again, a squared plus 3b plus 9b squared is not going to factor any farther. Um, a minus 3b does not factor any farther. 2 doesn't factor any farther, so we're done. This right here, uh, this last line here, is the complete factorization of 2a cubed minus 54b cubed. If you were to multiply these three things together down here, they would simplify down into this binomial. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.